My name's Sasha Pete, and I'm joined by a fantastic individual. This man tore up both the State League here in Victoria and the National Soccer League, none other than my fellow Kill or Downs post-primary high school uh, alumni, Sash Bichanovsky. Welcome, Sash. How are you, Sash? Thank you for the intro. So tell us, Sash, how did you fall in love with our great game of football? Um, I think the... <sighs> I, I guess uh, I think that you had a, uh, a guest on a few weeks, a few months ago. I think it was Goran Lozanovsky. He said the same thing: the European influence. Um, parents from obviously Macedonia. Um, they've always got a round ball around in terms of parkland and in the village and stuff like that. So I think that was main aspect. So dad was a bit of a footballer in the village. Uh, you know that father village football mentality. I was once the greatest. Um, but more, more the fact that I had an older brother who played as well. So, you know, the backyard football stuff. And he obviously uh, ended up moving to, to, to Footscray JS2 where he played his uh, junior football. And I just tagged along, kicking the ball around, and then it started from there. So the, um, the you, you're obviously you ended up going to high school at uh, in at Kill or Down. So did you always grow up in the west western suburbs of Melbourne? Correct. I lived in Yarraville. My okay. parents came to Australia in the 19, 1970, and then they moved that towards uh, that part of town, Yarraville. So we were there up until what sixteen years, up until eighty six, before I relocated to to Kill or Downs, which yeah. And the uh, and so you uh, you first you, you said you, your older brother played at at Footscray JUSD as a junior, and then your dad obviously uh, it, it took you along. You, you scored lots of goals um, in, in your senior career. What, did you gravitate to the front of the pitch when you were a junior? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. That that was my main aspect. Uh, you know, enjoyed scoring goals. You know, wherever you're playing football, I guess. Um, you know. <laughs> I could tell you stories where literally my, my brother's friends in, in, in the parkland locally in, in Yarraville, there'll be like 30 players and you split the teams and always mixed. So I had my mates who were the same age. It was like a four year difference from other kids. And then there was, you know, there were times there was like, you know, competitiveness was just out of this world. You know, we just, you know, just kicking each other and who can score the most goals and, you know, Tears, no tears. It was just, yeah. You know, I, I enjoyed that part of football, scoring goals, and yeah, it was, I think it was an element of back in those days that strikers would get that sort of, you know, uh, recognition. Do you do you think that having an older brother actually helped your career because you actually were reaching towards his level, physicality, etc.? Yeah, true, and I mean definitely because he was a defender, and he was that type of player that. You know, whatever stood in his way, he would just take out mm. uh, different football back then. And it was the same thing in our backyard. You know, we had a, a backyard that was literally, you know, if anyone knows how Yarraville houses are and blocks are, it was, what, 15 by four metres, I would say, and literally just, yeah. A little just, cage. Basically, you had the vegetable garden that you had to watch out for. Yeah. Um, and you know, you make as much noise as you can, either you know, in many ways, and smashing the ball against the you know, uh, weatherboard home and you know, hitting the peppers out of the garden, dad would always crack it. Uh, but yeah, he used to just didn't hold back, put it that way. And you played all your junior career at, at Footscray. Um, did it feel like home at the time you're growing up? Obviously, pre the breakup of the the old Yugoslav, did it did it feel welcoming there, and you were part of that family? Sure. I mean, look, it, it was a multicultural club. Obviously, being the aspect of uh, the former Yugoslavia, you, you had all nationality. You know, you had I can tell you, it was Serbian, Croats, Macedonians. Um, uh, there was other, you know, it was uh, Albanians as well. I can remember now, and there was, you know, we had Polish players as well. So it was. You know, it was a good multicultural club, but mm -hmm. being so close to home, mm -hmm. um, it just felt, you know, the right place in terms of where the club was sitting in terms of, you know, obviously being in the National League. Mm. So, 
And this was part of, you know, I mean, I had Altona Gate at the time, was around the corner, but they were playing state one, whereas Footscray, if you want to make it to the top at the time in the National League, mm. that was the right avenue to go. Yep. Okay. So I think, so when you were in year 12, I think I was in year seven, and I'm pretty sure in the year that you made your debut was in your final year of high school. Is that right? Or you'd correct. already made, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's correct. So, and I remember also going to a, you know, a football cup and like you're in the senior squad of the the, 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 the high school. Very, very good from what I can remember. I don't know who else was in the side. And Lev Osman was there. Sorry? Lev Osman. Yeah, so Lev Osman was in my year. So, so, so uh, Lev was in my year, but you were like five or six years older. But in your year, there was also other good players that played quality football. You, you obviously in the in a set, playing yeah. in the National League, but there were other players that were pl- uh, playing, you know, reserve football, etc. Um, do you remember that high that high school team? You guys did quite well that year. Oh, you know, I can't remember in terms of the research with that one, but I think we we came close okay. in the state final. Um, but this, you know, the, the thing is with that team itself, um, obviously it was a new school. Mm. So the kids that went there, was there was an element of um, Aussie rules football and then the soccer people that were there uh, either had just relocated. Okay. And it was like a, you know, it was a made up team of, of footballers and some, you know, I can tell you now, some of those football players in that team went, you know, over the... You know, it's superior in terms of the football development. So that was one of the things that you know we we had the core group that get into. I think it was a semi final, the state final was it was basically we did good enough yeah. to get to that. Um, but in terms of other players where they were playing at, you know what, my memory is so long ago I can't remember. I tell okay. you, but yeah. I think it's basically because the world was in the spin at the moment at that time for me. Okay, you um, moved. You moved. Being, from, you moved from Yarraville over to the to New York. Yeah, okay, correct. I, I was Sash. I was there from eighty six. So that was eighty nine. That year, so eighty nine was a was a strange year. Like from being the start of the year, from just being a normal school kid to getting a couple of articles in the local paper, the Herald Sun, in terms of you know me and me playing nationally at the time. Yeah, in my debut year, and then other things start to creep in as well. Um, in terms of you know, uh, a, you know, call up to the, the young socceroos, the young soccer yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. So it was like a World War spin at the time. The, Just trying uh, to... so so prior to you, prior to you making your debut, did you did you get called up to train with the seniors? Yeah. Did so you, would you have well, scratch matches like first eleven, second eleven? Um, that, that was always always happening because at that time you're always playing reserve youth team. It was called youth team, then youth team versus the seniors. Um, and, and there was always games here and there. Um, and, you know, those days are sort of a little bit gone from that, I would think. Uh, you're not going to get that just in case someone gets injured or, you know, or whatever it is. Excuse me. But at that period of time, um, you know, playing youth team football at the age of 15, you know, we at Footscray was like, uh, you know, out of this world, literally. You know, I wasn't a, not a tall 15-year-old. I was a small 15-year-old. So, and it took a year and a bit to do well, score goals, uh, being pushed by certain players in the youth team, like Tom Butianis and Joe Bachak. You know, these were names that would go and play, you know, the highest level. So they were fellow strikers that you had to have a task and obviously to do well. And then from then on, that 89 year, um, when Futsuko was a little bit struggling in terms of results, players, you know, I got called into a training session, uh, spent the whole week with them. And, you know, I, I never thought of really debuting at all that week. And it was a massive turnaround that week leading so, up to it. So was that was that the year that they got relegated? That Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So they, I think there was like so many Socceroos in that team. Like you had uh, obviously Crino. Yep. I think so. It was Kenny Murphy in that side? 
Yeah. You know, so you like uh, Gary Van Egmond, Mehmet yeah. Durakovic. Yeah. Um, so on paper, you'd think there's Ernie, no Tapai. Way. Ernie was Ernie over. Tapai, yeah. Ernie Tapai, yeah. another soccer roo. Yeah. Palatides was sort of like a shadow squad member as well at the time. Um, no, look, it's star studded, like, re- like, it really. Was. Like, I think, I think what caused majority of the, of the problem around there now, I mean, not, not that I'm you know, in, in the committee meetings and stuff like that, there was just literally a disconnection there, and there was. There was issues going on behind closed doors for some reason or another. Um, why should this team get relegated at the time? Yeah, uh, I, I found that when I did make my debut, it, it was that sort of stuff was not on my mind. I just thought about me, me, me. What, yeah. what can I do in terms yeah. of in doing terms of myself and not look not looking like an idiot? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So because you can easily get caught up. I was a skinny seventeen year old. Um, you know, so literally I had players like Kenny Murphy, like you said, Oscar Crino was, was like a mentor to me. He, he told me when to go, when to move, when not to, I mean, I wasn't playing as a number nine. I was playing as a right winger. Correct. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So having these people were, were fantastic towards my development. Mm. Um, but then, you know, we, we had some decent results and then it came down to that one game against Melbourne and Croatia that, um, yeah, caused us to get relegated. Mm, mm, mm. And that was only, what, eight games, nine games that I played that year. Yeah, yeah. So you you make, you, you would return to NSL, but obviously you're still a young lad. So explain to me, after after Footscray, do you, do you play on the following, or is it the club dissolved? What, what happened? No, no, no. So the, so the following year we were playing in the... State League One. Yep. Um, with Footscray or, or? They changed it. So obviously at that period of time that I made, it was Melbourne City, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was with Footscray, but that year was, it was a 34 uh, round season. Uh, there was 18 teams in that league. Um, and I only played, I think it was 26 games because I was in and out of the uh, the state, always going into camps for uh, the young soccer roos. Mm-hmm. Um, so literally out of nowhere, I got a call up. It was one of those things. I'm a nobody one minute. And then the next minute I'm going to camps with, you know, Paul Ocon, Tony Popoviches, David Seal. It's one of probably the most successful teams, Trojanovskis going around. Brad Maloney now, obviously. Um, and so, yeah, we did some tours together. Uh, we did the qualifiers in Fiji. So, you know, always doing that. So I was in and out of that year. Uh, but my my focus was more the Socceroos, young Socceroos, then playing for Footscray just. But yeah, and understandably so. That would have been an immensely proud feeling getting the call up to represent your country. Uh, look, especially when you go to Canberra, AIS, the way it was, look at Fortress. It's you know you get there and you're amongst these people that gymnasts and cyclists and well-known people, swimmers, um, and and then back then the training pitches were like out of this world. You know, you were full time professional. We, you know, that was just amazing. Um, and spending time with your peers, you yeah. know, that, that was good times. Um, yeah, so that was that year. That was a 1990 season. So, mm, mm, mm. and so how many years? So, was it 90 after 90 it, it stopped? What when did the uh, when, I think, when did, I think when did it was about then? Yeah, yeah, about I think ninety or ninety one, and then and the club just folded. Yeah, I think it went to the the Argentinians got the license. Yeah, yeah bought the yeah. club out. So the um, <clears throat> so after 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 JUST, where do you go? So you 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 had your your, your representation with the young Socceroos in the under twenties. Um, and uh, do, do you get many minutes in that in that? Squad? Um, look, when you go on tours, we, I mean, we went through an Asian tour and the Asian tour was, you play many minutes there in terms of, you know, they're shy for trying to see what his squad's like and the players and their attitude and their, you know. Um, but we went to Fiji. So I played um, got one cap against New Zealand in Fiji and I showed a qualifiers back then. 
Uh, very hard to make that team. We had Matthew Bingley as well. So he was already a, a season, two, two, three season pro, mm, mm. you know, and, you know, he spent time in Japan. So I was up against him, to tell you the truth. And that was not easy, put it that way. But, you know, and then I got minutes there, um, came back. So we had qualified. And then we, uh, in terms of the Ocean had qualified, and then we played the, the two game home and, home and away season to go to that next phase, which is the World Cup. Mm. World Youth Cup played Israel, um, and both games were played in Sydney mm-hmm. because uh, there was issues obviously in Israel at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, that Berkovitz was playing, they played at West Ham for, for Israel at the time. So, mm-hmm. so I was on the team list for the one game, but the other one I wasn't. Got we qualified that year or that time, I should say, and then. Yeah, and then from then on, um, I think we had another camp leading up to the the final camp before they went to Portugal and um, didn't quite make the final squad, which was kind of kind of hard at the time, especially it's been a year with, 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 the, with the lads. Mm. Um, it, it probably knocked, knocked me about big time because just to sit at home on SBS watching it, you know, thinking that you're just so close but yet so far away. Mm, mm, mm. and it's 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 most footballs will experience that at some point in their career so it's it's about obviously how you you come back from that disappointment you know how do you how do you overcome that adversity um interesting, yeah, but Sash, interesting with, with, with football itself you're going to get that like you said you know i mean in the day you're going to move forward um this this was probably a bit bit hard to move forward from that um you know i mean i, I had three knockbacks since in Victorian football, like as a junior, you know, you always get to the last 20 and then when they pick their final squad, you then go to the championships. So those sort of knockbacks, you know, they teach you a lesson. Mm. This was a big hit. Those ones you can sort of little bit forget about it and move on because obviously you're still a teenager, whereas this was like, you know, this was a massive thing, but it took me a while. I mean, in, in that period of time, I ended up transferring to, to Wollongong Mac, which mm. You, you were asking that question to go play in the cell. And that was their first year in the National League. Yep. Um, so then I had issues there with, with transfer. Oh, did you give a bit? Did they put a, a big transfer on your head? I don't need to explain it to you, mate. It was ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I, I had games and it was like literally, you know, I, I, I've showed my boys this, the article was written now, you know, in, in one of the Herald Sun articles, $30,000. I said, what? And I, I couldn't get a clearance. So I'd gone to Wollongong and relocated as a 19-year-old. You know, and I would spent there, I think it was a good eight weeks training and waiting to be cleared. Mm. They, they wouldn't budge. Footscrow wouldn't budge. And then finally I got released and I played five games and um, John Fleming was the coach then. Uh, and, yeah, five games I ended up playing and then um, I moved back to Melbourne after that. It wasn't. It was only a short stint. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I mean that that even that factor there apparently this is wasn't fully discussed with me and Les Schoenfeld, but that was the, the reason why he picked because I wasn't playing national league, had to play national league. Yeah. Well, he didn't want me playing state league football. So yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it comes down when it comes down to a coach is selecting his squad, he goes, okay, this person's playing at the highest level and getting minutes, and this person's not. You know, like it, sometimes you split hairs about the, the quality of the player at the age. So cool. it's it's yeah, it's a a tough decision by any coach because you need you need to select only so you can't bring everybody right. So right. Um, and you yeah. know, like, that's what people, it is. People make those determinations, those fake rule. I mean, I don't know why you would want. I'd t- want to take my best player, the best team, whatever I thought, whether playing first division, fourth division. You know, take the take your best players, but. I suppose that's the way people justify it to themselves, you know. You know, Correct. If, if this, then this, and it, it makes it simpler. Um, but it, it, was, it was hard too because you know you, you're still 18, 19. You know, you're not you're not making decisions with with an agent at the time. Like you got footballers now, you got agents at 15, 16. I was making decisions, you know, on my own. Mm. You know, in terms of, you know, I had to leave and get out of there because, you know, you, you can sort of see the writing on the wall. Mm. Um, advice. It's good to have advice, you know, by grown-ups. 
But um, yeah, you know, it's just tough luck, I guess. So you you, you return back after after Wollongong uh, Macedonia. You return back to the state league here, and you come come play. Was it for Green Gully or okay? Yeah. And uh, did you get some success there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who was coaching? Willie Vasallo. Oh, Willie Vasallo. Yeah, so I played with his son Brandon uh, for years. Went on to become a decent footballer. So okay. And his grand and his grandson grandson's a quality player. G- grandson as well now. Okay, so Reese Bozanowski from Western United. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so Excellent. that runs, runs a little bit in the family if you think about it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So I, I played with Willie's son in, uh, in juniors. Um, so yeah, excellent. Um, so yeah, that, that 91 year, um, I think it was round three, went there round three and um, scored a hat trick on my debut that day. Quality. Against Morwell Falcons. There's a name. There's nice. A name. Um, so it was a good season. I think, you know, uh, ended up being on the 21 player of the year. Nice. And top goal scorer. Yeah. I mean, that's a uh, good return. Top goal scorer in the, in the 21s or in overall in, in, the, the, senior, in the seniors? Quality. That's, in yeah. Senior. So that, that, um, that formed the basis of you getting noticed again um, to go back into top flight. Well, I obviously, I spent another two season, uh, another season at Gully ninety two yep. as well. Yeah. So along the, those lines, a similarity again, twenty one under twenty one player of the year and uh, top goal scorer again. So obviously, I opened a few doors for me, and um, yeah, more while I came knocking in the first year in the national league, and uh, yeah, and then I, I made a move to Morwell for the. Is it, um, so. I think was it uh, McLaughlin out there at uh, at uh, at Mall at the time? It was a, I think uh, in their first year. Yep. Was was Harry Bingham his assistant? Was is or did he go in afterwards? Uh, no, no, Harry was there. Correct. Okay. Was he Harry was was he, pl- was he playing? Was he playing in no. uh, ninety two or he was already? Um, oh, I, I can't remember. I can't remember ninety two if Harry was playing, uh, but he he was coaching. The, the reserves at the time, and then it was uh, Bobby's obviously assistant. Yeah. Um, Did Bobby get let go in the first year there or the second? No, no, the second year. Second year. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, and that's when Harry took over. Uh, is that so, Bobby? I think, I think, um, I'm just trying to remember now because I, I had <laughs> obviously I left that 93 after 93. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, so 94. So that- that would have been an interesting uh, drive down to Morwell. Did you were you on the were you in a like there would have been like four or five players? Like if I remember in every year that Morwell team, they'd sign four to six players from Melbourne and you'd all get in a car and drive down there. So no? Crazy. Crazy. So who was in your van? So we used to meet up at Hallam, Hallam Hotel. Okay. And then so we all we all would either drive or we all get picked up along the way. Uh, we used to have a pickup strategy. It was me, Sunny Seven, Sunny Seven, Zoe Marcosi coaches Avondale, obviously, uh, and Adrian Pender. You know, and and Adrian and Zoe would be obviously working. Uh, I hadn't been working at the time; just a full time semi professional, I guess, but full time professional. And so I'll probably do most of the driving. You know, I'll be driving different cars, either my car or their car, and they'll be sleeping in the car because obviously they'll be, you know, doing long hours of work. But we used to meet at Harlem, you know, if you've got any issues and problems and you, and you can't sort of, you know, carpool, leave your car there and you can jump in with someone else so you don't go doing it all on your own. Mm. Um, it, it, it was tough because it used to be the old southeastern arterial. Yes. So, you, you know... You can, you know, can, can, Car park. You know, light after light before you get to Warrigal Road, then you're, yeah, you know, home stretch. Mm. Um, but you know, Sash to be sitting in the car for that long and to get there, you literally, you know, you're pushing for time. You get there at six to start for six thirty. No time for rubs. 
<laughs> you know, you, you're stiff, stiff as a plank of wood. And he, he just push me, he just pushed me out of the car and he started training. That's how it used to be. Yeah. Be lucky. But I reckon with those boys with Markovsky, Penda, uh, um, and Seven, uh, there would have been a few laughs along oh. the road. So the way you give give each other a lot of crap. All the time going there, but on the way back there's quietness because <laughs> I'll be sleeping and you know, we just I'll be driving and, and it, was, it was just good times, you know. I don't think many of us, you know, could even think of what that that was the situation. Because you know, you get those cold nights in the Latro Valley and you know, you have circumstances at home, it could be you know, things going on in your life and you can't just quickly go home. Mm. You know, it's two hours. We're, we're getting home by 11.30 midnight. Mm. You know, it, it, and then sometimes you do the same thing the next day. Mm. Um, and people used to laugh at it and think, you know, why are you going so far? You had to sacrifice. Mm. You know, that was my sacrifice. You know, I couldn't get to South Melbourne or so Melbourne Nights, you know, it's a different story. So this was probably my yeah. avenue at the time. Lovely people, put it that way. Yeah, so uh, so Don Deeb, Frabitzu, I think, died earlier in the year. Um, Correct. Un- unfortunate. Yeah, he was a big uh, personality there at uh, at the Morwell Falcons, uh, Gippsland yeah. Falcons, ran, ran the club. Um, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, this person would, you know, just his the person himself, you know, he... he, he, he it was always around the club, and if you ever needed any sort of help, and he always put an arm around you, and and he's don't worry, I'll sort it out for you. And like say, you know, whatever worries that you had, like you know, a couple of speeding fines for whatever reason, you know, not that we wanted to speed, but yeah, you know, when you're on time, five ten k is over, you think you're okay, and then you get caught, and he'll be always helping you out and saying, don't worry, don't stress about that. Um, yeah. That's how lovely he was. He didn't have to. Yeah. That way, yeah. The other thing too is like you think of the Marconi's, the South Melbournes at that time. You know, Morwell's budget would have been you know a lot less. You you you're trying to find a complement of a squad uh, to do a job. Um, did you end up getting any big results in your time at Morwell, like against the, one of the, the bigger clubs that you remember, or doing something, you're scoring a goal, um, causing an upset? Um, yeah, well, round one we played Sydney Olympic. You know, at, at La Trail Valley, there we ended up winning 2 0. Beautiful. Um, so that was a good result. I mean, you know, that was a good thing. Uh, we played um, Heidelberg, beat Heidelberg there 3 1. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Melbourne Knights scored two that day, last game of the season. Um, 1 3 1. Um, you know, we, we, we were very competitive. Put competitive, it, you know, yeah. We were competitive. You know, we had probably the only person that had that experience. I mean, I mean, the experience of what? You know, I only had played 10 or so, you know, more than 10 NSL games. Well, John Woodell probably had the more experience. Yeah. Billy Wright, uh, obviously being international, he was doing international. Um, he had that sort of you know, exposure. Um, but the majority of us were state league players mm. put together. Um, and, you know, we, we worked hard together. You know, we, we grinded results. Um, yeah, 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 and um, obviously, uh, after your, your time there, you you rejoined. Uh, did you did you sign that uh, Brunswick? It was at uh, Brunswick after that, Juventus. Yeah, um, it's like it's like an every every year thing, isn't it? Yeah, and so like I didn't realize uh, doing the research that you played for so many clubs. So when I think, I think of your first debut being just. And then I think of your time at at Altona Magic, you know, that long stretch where you you score, I don't know, a big a bajillion goals. Um but yeah, so you, you're back with Margaritas again uh at at Juventus. So how was that? Was it um and what was his style like as a coach? Um look, he he was more old school old stuff. School. There's there's similarities. Him and Bobby McLaughlin had obviously been from the old National League days, you know, with South Melbourne's and Footscray. I mean, Bobby coached Footscray just and stuff like that. Um, I mean, my move was based on just with John himself, but it was very tough going to Morwell. So I think that period of time, um, it took its toll. And I thought, you know what, John's at Brunswick. You know, he came in and, you know, I, I think he literally 
was one of the new signings at the time. And it was around the corner. Yeah. You know, look, that was a hard, it, and that was a good thing. You know? Who was in that Brunswick side? So Andrew Zinni was in the squad in the squad. Yeah. Um was it yeah. likes of Fabian Cantalupo? Was he? No, no, no. Fabian was not there. No, no, no. He, they were they were gone before that. Um, there was Benini, who played for Ghana. Oh yeah, the rants for Benini. He was there. Yes, um, he's a good little player. Good little player. Jim Cortis was the keeper. Jim Cortis, uh, okay. Uh, Sean Lane was there. I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to think. Um, Minicello, uh, Rinna Minicello was there. Okay. Um, so, look again. I think the Morwell and, and the Brunswick sides were sort of similarities in terms of not too many big names. It wasn't like an elite sort of squad. Um, so, I mean, that period of time was, you know, just about getting minutes. I mean, Morwell wanted me to stay, but it just made it too difficult. So I, I thought going Brunswick with John, um, and he. Obviously, didn't what he last, you know, didn't last too long after that. So he got the sack, and then Kenny Murphy came in. Yep. Um, yeah. And so obviously, you you knew him from your time at Footscray, you know, him correct and coming at, at okay, correct. But it didn't help the situation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kenny's a lovely man, so you know, and it didn't help the situation, and I lasted thirteen games there. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it, it, and then now so it's not an attitude problem, put it that way. It's not an attitude problem, it's just because of decisions that are made, you know, for whatever reason. Well, that's a, that's a thing. Like when, you, when you're a striker, um, people are looking for solutions, right? And right. goals are the solutions. And so you, your phone would be ringing, I'm sure, right? I, I, I bet you you had opportunities every year to consider moves. Um, and it's just you were evaluating that those decisions at those point in time. So, that's right. I mean, and more well scored nine goals that season, uh, either being as a midfielder or, or sometimes as a striker. So there's the rotations there. Yeah. But uh, Brunswick, I can tell you, I only scored two goals at that period of time. Um, and that's maybe just due to the fact that, you know, as you look at it, it's just part of life. Mm. I'm not going to go, you know, tearing the players down. If they make a decision, a board decision or coach decision, and they want to bring other players in, you know, then you move on. You know, it. Uh, you know, no grudges. As we get older, you think about it. There's no grudges. The um, so I, I think so. You did the short stint at at uh, at Wollongong Macedonia, but it would have been immensely proud that first stint at Preston, being of Macedonian heritage. So, what was that like for your family when you when you get to play for a for a Macedonian side, being of Macedonian heritage, was there, you know, like, was there a sense of, I don't know? Oh, 100%. There's, a, there's a, definitely a pride there in terms of, you know, that, that factor of, you know, parents' motherland, I guess, as, as I would say. Um, you know, um, it, it doesn't get e easy as well because you're playing against people that you know, you, got, you know, relatives and family, friends, and there's always a discussion in terms of, you know, is he playing well? And, you know, in the Messianic community, within your own community, you've got to go beyond and above. Mm. Uh, you know, he shows any sort of weakness, you know, you get crucified. Uh, so Preston was a great team, you know, that first year, 94. Yeah. So, right after the move of Brunswick. That, did they get, did they just, were they just relegated just the year before? Is that right? Yeah. That's right. It's, that's right. So that, again, probably a side that you think, oh, that, that's that's a pretty decent side. I don't think they should have got relegated the, the year that they did. So you went there the following year. Yeah. Um, I think Phil Trinidis played there forever. Like, uh, so, um, yeah. So you, you said you were with uh, Sean Lane at at, uh, at Juventus. I didn't know he's there, but was he also there at uh, Preston? Preston, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Steve so Blair was there as well. Um, Dale White was there. Okay. William McAleer. So um, is it the same Steve Blair that played at South Melbourne? Correct, the centre half. The centre half. Okay. I did, so the brick. The brick. Yeah. Wow. Rock solid. Yeah. That's, you know, gen, gen, gentle giant off the park. 
uh, on the park, just a warrior, a warrior. So we had Peter Alton who was coaching that time. Okay. Um, so we did obviously the clean sweep and, you know, we ended up winning the championship there and played at the old middle park. Um, you know, we, we had a good number of play, players that could score goals. So, you know, we had players. So interesting. You didn't play at BT Connor. Um, you played at Mill. I mean, we played at, so the final itself was at Middle Park. Yeah. Okay, all right. We played so at BT. Regular yes. season, obviously at Preston's ground, and then right. you talk about the final that you played. Final okay. year that year. So yeah, yeah. And and you won the league that year. That, that was won the uh, league that year. And just to give something back to the supporters, I guess um, you know that was one of those main objectives there. Um, you know, again, it's a tough lot to to try and satisfy, but you know, I guess Preston being you know, they, they are a huge club within the community and they're doing very well these days. The uh, do, Was it a heavy shirt to wear? Like, you, you know, you play for some some clubs and you realise, okay, now I'm putting on the Preston shirt, being of Macedonian background, maybe not for the other um, boys with different ethnicities, it would have been just another a, a club, but being who you are, now you're starting to come into your... Um, so you're in your early 20s now, early mid-20s, are you starting to um, realise what you need to do for the team? Does it Was there pressure? You know, that element? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I wasn't a local product. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they obviously knew me playing from, from Footscray Just days. And uh, so I wasn't like a local sort of junior boy. Um, the junior boys was Rob Spasewski, Slochewski, uh you know, Chris Oscar, these were sort of local boys that played there as a junior. Uh, so for me, it was probably not a junior, then I had to obviously try that extra bit more to feel you know, welcome within the community. Mm. Um, so that that was, yeah, you're right. It, there was that emphasis and being a striker and scoring goals and playing in Peter Olsen's team, you know, that shirt gets even heavier when you're playing for Ollie. So, well, it, it's interesting. Like, what influence did he have? Because he 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 scored a lot of goals in his day. Yeah, um, sure. Obviously, sure. playing for the Socceroos and whatnot, and playing in the old Renner Cell and uh, state leagues. Um, here, yeah, what, how did, how did uh, he try and change emphasis? Because I remember him being very fast. I mean, you were quick too, like, but you were, I remember you being a lot more skillful, you know, your first touch good, being able to turn a pl- pl- uh, player, you were a lot more deceptive when, when you play, when you played, um, and you seemed to elude players, find space to score, as opposed to just run, like probably Peter's pace just would have got him over the line. Um, how did he influence you uh, trying to score goals? I think maybe because I wasn't always the out and out striker at, at Preston. I was more like a, a, a 10 that would work off Dale White. So I okay. had that space in the middle of the park. So I wasn't always having those type of players, you know, up my backside and, you know, kicking me from pillar to post. Mm. So I would work off that. So in terms of, you know, I was watching the play going forward, yeah, which was a good thing. Um you know, look, all these influences was uh, obviously expressing yourself. You know, he, he he just wanted you to express yourself, but as long as you worked hard off the ball. Um, and you know what? You know, you had players around you that were, you know, if you're not working your bollocks off, you know, you you'll be told off. So mm-hmm. he, that this sort of influence ran with the players and as well as Peter Alton. So look, Peter Alton, tell you now today, if I seen today, you know, he was just, you know, that giant of a person that you don't want to obviously, you know. Disappoint. Disappointing, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. To have a beer with him, different stories, different person. Yeah. You know, <laughs> football, football aspects. You know, I could tell you a story where, you know, um, I was literally minging, if you remember another word, minging, like I was terrible Yeah. in the first half. And then I, you know, he looked at me and he just said to me, I'll give you another 10 minutes. This is the first half, and I was performing terrible. So somehow or another, I ended up scoring a goal, and I just ran near the bench and, you know, celebrating. He said, great goal, but he's still coming off. And to his word, you know, to his word, he, five minutes later, subbed me off. Mm. So that that's that's what type of man he was, yeah? So not that it's a bad thing. You know, I just said that's, that's how he, he would run it, you know, stuck to his words, I guess. Mm, 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 mm. You know, we can't always play... Brilliant every week, yeah, every game. It's not, not easy to do. Mm-hmm. So the um, 
and and you, did you stay a couple of years at Preston? Yeah, 95. Um, again, you know, for whatever reason, the club, with the club we know itself, we had four coaches that year. And that, that, that's full on. Like the, 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 it's something about ethnic committees, you know, where things are going wrong. It's sack the coach, sack the coach. And I too have been involved at a, at a club where, you know, sometimes it'd be two or three coaches in a year, but four coaches, that's ridiculous. Like player walkouts, you know, we weren't being paid at some times, you know, and it's not just them. You know, it was it's a lot, a lot of clubs go through that period of time back then, you know, promise okay. you things and, you know, we had full cut. And then literally we were, I ended up being a captain for the remainder of the season, second half of the season. And, you know, I, I was still relatively young. I would, I would have been, you know. Mid-20s? Mid, early 20s. Yeah, no, I'm not even 24 yet. Yeah. You know, so, and we ended up losing the last day against Box Hill to be relegated. So, um and that was tough. I think that was tough because, you know, a lot of the kids there were, were good quality kids because there was more and more youth being uh, put into the Life, starting yeah. 11 playing. Um, there was a lot of pressure on the boys, especially with the crowds that we were getting. And, you know, as crowds can do, that, they can say what they want. You know, I mean, that's entirely up to them. And that was tough. Mm. And we got relegated. And, um, yeah, then, and then 90, 96, I had um, Altona Magic. Bring me in, you know, a conversation, and I went to Altona. So, are, are they also in the? Are they also in the in the state one, or where where are they? That they they're in the state one at the time, the Premier League. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I suppose it's it's a natural decision, right? So you relegated out of the the state one financial turmoil at, at Preston. You know, four coaches in a year. A uh, bit of a shambles all across the uh, ground. So, uh, was there a large player exodus from from Preston that that left to, to various clubs in Melbourne? Um, I, I think so because I mean, look at that time. I, if, if I can recall, it was you know, it's just about obviously your development. You know, when when clubs make these decisions, it, there is that little bit of pressure where players do do leave. Mm. Um, I think the like the, the boys that were there from a long period of time, they stayed on. Uh, and they sort of saw it out from there. Um, but you know, I think, you know, at the time I wasn't, you know, it was about my career, I guess, you know, I wanted to go forward and and I think it was just an opportunity, you know, too good that I couldn't knock back. Okay. I mean, they just they just won the championship that year, 95, I'll turn to magic. Um, so you know, and Ian Dobson was coaching there, and I thought, you know, there's a bit of stability there. You know, I can't be in this situation where, you know, you don't know what's going to happen next. You know, you want, I want to obviously better myself and, you know, do well and then maybe go back to National League again, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, so it's now 95, is it 95, 96? 96. 96. 96, yeah. 96 and you're at, at uh Altona Magic. Um how how many years did you spend there in that that stint at Altona? Uh overall Altona, I think 10 years. 10 years. Um obviously there was the period when I went to back to Gippsland Falcons in 99 and Gully for a yep. season. Um but yeah, totally like 10 years. So that would have been that would have been um I think so you mentioned you mentioned Lev Osman because he ended up playing again at at, at at Magic. I'm sure you crossed paths there Correct. Uh, at, at Magic. Yeah, he played, I think he played did he play as a six or as a center half? He, he played he played as a center half and he played majority as a center half at the okay. time. Right. With uh yeah. Stajopoulos came across too with him. And uh, so, so you're at you're at uh, Altona. You you get a, a chance to return to the NSL uh, with uh, with Morwell. You're now you're now a lot more older, a lot more mature. What what's it like now? You're comparing yourself because you're still trying to push yourself to play at the highest level. Um, what was that time like? 
Look, I think you, you need those coaches to get the best out of you. Um, you know, being at the low point of 95, 96, 97, you know, even 90, 98, we're, we're, we're good, good periods of time at Altona Magic. You know, we won three in a row. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, winning a, you know, a top goal scorer there as well. Uh, good quality was lads. There? Was it? Was it? Was it was you know, it, so, but. It, it, was Gary Cole the coach there? Who, were the, who was the coach at? Uh, well, started off, Ian Dobson started off okay, there Dobson. in 1995, right. when I got there. And then he left to go take on the job at uh, Melbourne Knights. Um, and then Gary Cole stepped in to take over um, that 96 season. And then the 97, he coached as well. So, you know, two, two fantastic people. Uh, in terms of you know their football pedigree, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, that's what I'm saying. For, for my development, I need these type of people around me um, to, to help me get through these you know, times. And I think you know you you learn a lot from that. And I think Altona ended up being because you know most of these kids are either I'd gone to school with or I played with, being obviously the Western Suburbs, I knew quite well. Um, you know, the expectation of the pressure was probably not as big as what Preston was, I guess. But, um, you know, again, you know, there's people that, you know, I even knew within the committee as well. And I think that period of time was it was a good development stage of my career. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, obviously you would return uh, to... To old old toner, but you said that 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 first lot you, you went back to back to back. There was a there was a there was a period there that you guys just dominated. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It was, it was you know ninety five they played Berlin, which I wasn't there obviously, and then ninety six we played Heidelberg uh, on that on penalties. You know, scoring a brace that day, you know, meant a lot, I guess. Um, and then ninety seven we played Berlin. 97, and we, we won that one 4 2 and scored a brace that day too. Um, so, that look, it was more consistency involved in my game there. Mm. Uh, maybe because I was playing out in that striker, wasn't being mm. shifted around left, front, and center. Mm. Uh, so, I stabilized myself in that position. And um, it's like being in junior days, junior football, I guess. Mm. You know, you've gone back sort of home to where you, where you belong, you know, as a number nine. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, the, yeah, the, and then you, you get you get a call up. Uh, you didn't last long there at uh, Morwell. So how did that transpire? What what made you go? So the fish, the mere fact that you're going to play a, a yeah. step up. So what, so the story goes that you know I mean I, I naturally thought there was no opportunity playing in national league unless something you know a white knight came along. Mm -hmm. um, so what happened was uh, Green Gully put an offer for me to go to Green Gully. So, you know, I ended up going Green Gully with Ian Dobson at the time, which was the uh, start of 99. Okay. Um, so I went there and I, I did four weeks of pre-season with Green Gully and then Gippsland Falcons had already played, I think they played about... 10 games or so, nine, okay. 10 games. And they're looking for obviously strikers and um, they put the call in, I guess. And obviously being desperate to, to put yourself back in the shop window, um, I took the chance, um, went there and I think it was me, uh, well, the story goes, me and Lachlan Armstrong were there at the same time. Yep. Which... I had to do, before I even kicked the ball in anger, I had to do a four-week, another four-week on top of the four at Green Gully, eight-week pre-season to try and catch up. I mean, you know, I couldn't just go on there after four weeks of pre-season and try and play yeah. round 10 of the season. So that made it tough, uh, but I ended up going there and it took me four weeks to gain some sort of minutes in my legs. Yeah. Once I started playing, the first game was against Northern Spirit. At um, obviously the Spirit Oval, North Sydney Oval, in front of fifteen thousand people, you know, off off the bench. Um, so that sort of started the ball rolling again, and um, and then at, at that period of time, I guess, 
making the drive up to Gippsland. Uh, but this time around, working. You know, so you get, you're not staying home and you're not relaxing. So you get to work all day, drive to Gippsland. But these are sacrifices you would have to take. Mm. Mm. So I ended up playing 13 games. Um, scored a couple of goals. Uh, willing to stay on the following year. But um, I guess uh, Jeff Hopkins was coaching then and um, he decided against it mm. going forward. Uh, obviously, I had you know different process, different thoughts. Um, yeah, and then I and then I eventually went back to Green Gully again. Okay, all right. And um, they always they always had decent sides, uh, Gully in the in the in the state league. So, w- w- what was the um, what was it like there? Yeah, so that two thousand period, we had some good players. I guess you know we had um, Dean Fack, you know Zara Markoski's, and we had um, you know Nastiskis, um, you know Tony Nishoski. Uh, so we had we, we had some players, you know, obviously seasoned players. Um, Basala was there as well, like you mentioned it before. Um, Sunny Seven was there as well. So we we ended up winning first of the post. Mm-hmm. There was no top five series at the time. Um, so you yeah, won a few yeah. championships in your time. So it's, it's like, it, yeah. like obviously, four, four of them. Yeah, four yeah, them. yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, some some players go throughout their career and are having good careers and not winning anything, right? Um, you've had the the opportunity of being in good sides that that were fortunate enough to win success. Um, you know, uh, and they make you look good too, yeah. They make you look good, Sash. Yeah, so you're good quality <laughs> players, they make you look good, you know. So, and that's what I'm saying. You got to work it out to say, does that fit me? I think it does. If you want to win things, you know, you, you, you take these risks. Mm, mm, mm. And yeah. I was about winning. How's that sound? Is yeah, that terrible for me to say that. No, you know, no, yeah. Yes. So it's uh, scoring goals and winning games of football. Nothing it, better. Uh, it uh, yeah definitely puts smiles on uh, on people's faces. Like my week goes a lot better when my uh, team wins on the weekend. I'll tell you that. Oh, there you go. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and then um, so and after Gully back to, to to Magic, and this is where you do your long stint with them, right? Correct. Yeah. Then I, then I spend the seven years. Okay. Straight seven years. Yeah. That that's yeah that that's full on and and. Um, Full on, and you know, like it, it was, you know, a good period of time. And I think going back there again, um, it was probably a little bit different to what it was in the nineties. Um, unless you know, more maybe the thought process is teams gotten stronger in within the division. Like you said, we had Lev Osman would be there at that period of time in the mid two thousands. Oh four, oh six. You know, two more grand finals, but I'm I'm successful, I guess. Mm. Um, you know, at least to, it was all about that playing finals and you know, try and win as much as you can. I mean, end of the day, you know, this is what we do it for, you know. So like um so I remember you you'd score lots of goals, like lots of goals. You'd be like the bit I think on average you'd score a goal every two two games, like if ex- like so, what was the what was the biggest in any given year? What was the most goals that you scored? Do you remember? Uh, just uh, the season fixture uh, twenty four. See, that's huge. Like who, do, who? Like you think now? Like who scores twenty plus goals in a in a team? Mm-hmm. Right. So, I think you got to set targets and you got to tell yourself if I can do play well and, and play 24 games, 26 games of the year. And you can, you know, anything after 10, as long as you get to the, to the figure of 10, then whatever happens after that is obviously a bonus. Yeah. You, you've got to average it on 10 goals. If you're not, if you're not hitting 10 goals a season, uh, which I could tell you, uh, it happened to me a few times. And the, the stress levels were built because the club's always looking at, a, you know, other avenues if you're not scoring goals week in and week out. Mm. Um, so that was basically my thought process. And, and, and if I'm scoring 10 goals or more in a year, then I'm, I must be doing okay as a striker. Mm. Anything under that, you know, then you've got to ask yourself questions. 
And so who, who's coach at this time? So this 04, 06 period, who's the coach at, at, at Magic? Uh, Vlado Tortescu. Okay. So what was he like? So didn't he, didn't he coach overseas, like play overseas and coach overseas? He played overseas, correct. Yeah. correct. He played uh, for Vardad and uh, he, he played in the Mas- Macedonia with the old Yugoslavian first division he played then, I guess. Um, and he was bought out by... Um, by Footscray, I think it was back in the day, and um, yeah, nice mannered person. You know, approachable, very approachable. With football knowledge, obviously, um, and you know, it allowed you to express yourself without being, you know, hound in. You know, don't do this, don't do that. You know, who allowed you to do it? Put it that way, mm-hmm. but within its limits, which was which was a good thing. I mean, at that period of time, I was a little bit older, I guess. Um, so you're not erratic, you know, you're more controlled. Mm. Um, that's why I sort of saw that period of time. And, you know, he, he trusted you to do what he can do on the outside of the pitch, but with your influence on the pitch, you know, the way he sort of thought process would be that you control the game. That's the main thing. You know, don't get out of, out of control. So he allowed you to do things that, you know what, I felt comfortable with. Mm. Mm. So in your career, looking back, who would you say, okay, oh, this week we've got, you know, and I'm lining up against defender or central pairing, whatever, you know, I'm in for a tough game. These guys are going to kick me by and play. Who who, who did you think, oh, no, uh, I, I know today's going to be a tough day? Oh, yeah, you can name names, you know, you can name Dougie Hodson. You know, Big Dougie, uh, Della Rocca, Paul Della Rocca, um, Stuart Canal, like this sort of big boys, big defenders. Um, Dean Fat, you know, we've had a, you know, we're good, good mates and we've had our running since junior level. You know, um, it's just one of those things that I think, you know, whoever you put yourself up against those center halves, it, it, you know, there's a reason why they're there. Yeah, they're trying to stop you from getting past them. Mm. I mean, I'm not six foot something, you know, I always wanted to board my feet. So if I could, you know, do things, you know, on the ground, I'm not a Carol, I guess, you know, put it up in the air, I'll knock it in. Yeah. It was a different player, but these type of players that, you know, you have to think at least, you know, a couple of seconds quicker. And then you talked about before, you know, my movement off the ball. It was more the fact that, because I obviously played midfield a little bit through my career, mm. I would tend to drift drift out wide, drift in the middle of the park, making late runs into the box. Mm. And a little bit, they, because they were never going to come out and, you know, in terms of if I dropped into the midfield, they would never come out to the midfield and follow me. They would just allow me and think that, you know, non-effective. So I used to learn to do that and then obviously make my way into the box. Mm. So I try and avoid as much as I could that contact. The physical contact, Yeah. Contact you'd be giving away you'd be giving away sometimes 15 20 kilos on these guys i'm sure like yeah, uh, no no I, I, I allowed to my strengths so yeah, they, 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 these were my strengths how can mm. i get into behind and then where i can become dangerous mm. I, I, I would i don't think i scored too too many from outside of the box but majority of them were in, in the box okay yeah yeah i mean you know these top players but you know, in terms of physicality, I mean, you want that, yeah? I mean, even at training, I think the only period of time that were physical was probably, you know, magic days, I guess, because everyone was competing for positions. Mm. Uh, other, other sessions, I think, they were pretty calm. There wasn't too overly physical. Um, but when you trained against Tom Markowski, you know, Simon Mateski within Italian Magic, Mate, you got competitive at training, even at training itself. So you knew, you know, we were a championship winning team, you're up against quality defenders. Mm. And even training, mate, it was very competitive. So, yeah, didn't have to be match days. It was training sessions as well at that club itself. And um, you, you, back in the day where Victoria had a, um, a senior side, you got to represent them uh, on, on a few occasions. What was that like? Oh, fantastic. I mean, I, I had obviously Tim White 
at the time in the junior product, uh, in the setup, I should say, he, he was running that and not, you know, obviously getting three knockbacks. And then eventually, you know, uh, as they do at the time, if you made uh, team of the year in the Premier League, that team will represent Victoria. Um, I'm just trying to think. I think it was Mount Gambian was my first game for Victoria against South Australia. Uh, and that, that was good. It was good to put the, uh, the big blue on. Um, they were, you know, we played as a one-off game there. And then we played, I think, a few years later, played in Mildura as well against South Australia as well. And so Tim White was, uh, Tim White was coaching. Tim, Tim White was, was obviously the time. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we went away with uh, Gary Cole to Fiji. And that was a good little tour. Played three games there. Um, and that was that period of time of, um, uh, uh, I'm just trying to remember now. Uh, was I, I wrote it down somewhere. I can't remember it. Was it uh, was I, 07 or 08 around that time? Around about that time, yeah. Okay. So Interesting. Like, I think um, Tim White's still involved in football. He, he, he marked my uh, C license assessment for my coaching. So uh, <laughs> he's still still involved in football. And yeah. uh, and 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 Gary, he's doing some good work with uh, a Kosher's podcast. So, um, lovely man, Gary Cole. Yes. Yeah, great, great, great man. Um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, talk to me. Um, the uh, looking back on y- in your career, right? So. Um, you you would go on us so after after um, you said you were ten year ten years total at uh, at, at Altona Magic after after there where, where do you go? Well, you know with with the way it is, I ended up going to Berlin. Yeah, uh, spent oh seven and then I went to Berlin. Um, now I'm pushing what thirty five or so. Um, Play with uh, Matty Lecky, I guess he was there. Bullying. They were playing in. How um, old was he? How was how old was he? Uh, Lecky was not even old enough to drive. I guess still in <laughs> high school. Uh, we had some decent. It was a couple of times we would drop him off home. Decent discussion. Um, loved the kid. Um, lightning quick. Yeah. Lightning quick. Um, ended up playing that season with him. I think it was only a handful of games. He got injured. He had a. I think he had a, a problem with his knee at the time, um, but you know I was lucky enough to play with him because you know he just it was lightning quick and he'll get behind defenders very fast and you know just work off off him I guess. Could could you tell could you tell this kid's got something that it, it could oh, uh, translate? Yeah, you know, hundred percent, Sash. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't I don't think he he might say it differently, but I think he didn't realise it when. You know, I ended up seeing at Melbourne City these days. I talked to him there and, you know, and have a discussion about it. And I said, do you remember, remember the time when you, you know, I don't think, you know, I, I, I don't think he loved playing football, but I wouldn't have never thought, you know, I don't think he ever thought that he was going to make it so big at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but just watching him, he just probably needed a little, little bit of guidance, uh, you know, and obviously his agent uh, did well with him to help him out. and. Um, you know, that, that was, I think he had another season. Literally, I was gone after that one year. I, I left Pauline after I uh, wait. Um, and he played another season, then he went to Adelaide from there. So it was like those type of players, uh, you know, that are special. Yeah. I think you start to notice more as you get older, you know, who, who's coming through and who will do well. Mm. Um, because, you know, I, I, t- to play one season in the A-League and then go overseas to Germany, you know, to to go there, it's not not easy at all. You know, it's very hard. I mean, you know, I, I don't think even I don't think many people do know this, but I trialed twice overseas. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So what ages? Was, well, I would have been twenty four. Okay. Went to Dutch first division, uh, Willem Twee. Okay. Uh, they they now are, I think in in division two, but they've been in against Ajax, I guess. And, yep, and yep, yep. So what was that experience like? How many weeks were oh, you there? I was there for five weeks. Five weeks. 
Five weeks of trained. Um, I, I took Sash. I, I thought I was super fit. I was fitting well. I mean, I went there and, you know, literally I was, I was four kilos from training twice a day, you know, for a five-week period. Played two, three practice games, um, as you do, obviously. Um, and, um, yeah, playing its final reserves and PSV, as you would. And, you know, it was a great experience. Um, you know, this is, this is what football's all about. Mm. Um, but obviously didn't didn't uh, didn't work out in terms of I mean a five week period was it was a good number you know it so wasn't like think, a one week two think, weeks like, yeah exactly so they didn't cut you after the second week but no. after two weeks you're thinking okay yeah you cut you realize okay it's not for me you haven't got you know and and back then like they did you go over on a European passport or an Aussie passport how did it work. Yeah, so I basically went on an Aussie passport. Um, wow. I don't hold two passports. Um, and there's a lot of, obviously, Australians playing in, in, in Holland and Belgium at the time. Um, and this was through local people here who aren't credited agents but had contacts uh, overseas. So I ended up, you know, obviously sending, I don't think many people know, faxes across and articles and, I think, uh, like, like I said to you, I mean, they wanted to see articles and read articles on you. That, that's how I got in a videotape of obviously games that, you know, it was cropped and, you know, ended up sending me across. So that, then they obviously brought me across to, to, to train and it was a five week period. Um, what was the standard was, differential like? So was it a step, step, massive step up? Massive step up. I mean, there, there were players there, they're like, uh, Sammy Herpia, captain of Liverpool. He was part, part of that team. Um, there was a player called Jonas Kolka. He was played at Crystal Palace as well. So they were part of that squad. And I think it was like three or four, uh, in, I think it was following years after that, played for the Dutch national, national team. Um, so the standard was very high. You know, it, every, every session was just quality about it. You know, it was amazing. And I, I, I loved it. I just thrived on it, put it that way. Okay. Um, so that obviously that stint didn't work out, which was, again, these are discussions that agents have with clubs. You know, I don't know what happens. Mm. Um, and this is how it works, yeah? You're not in the room with them, you know? So I don't know what happened. All it was said that I wasn't successful. So okay. then I ended up coming back home. Um, and then I spent my time at obviously at Magic. And then two years later after I had, they asked me to stay. My agent asked me to stay after that first trial. But I had to come home. I was getting married at the time. Yeah. And I just said to him, if you can find something else, mate, next flight out, I'm coming out, but I don't need to do all this stuff because, you know, you know, you paid for weddings and it, it was, you know, on the car. So I got married. It took him two years later to go back to Europe. Um, which Where's that at? Eight. Okay. Uh, uh, Muskets Old Club, St. Troiden, which was in Belgium's first division. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a, a, a four-week period. Um, got close. I didn't pull on medical. Um, okay. And then um, negotiations, this time around, my wife came. First time with me. So, you know, she obviously saw... So, but wait, I've yes. got to hold you there. I've got to hold you there. If a club puts you to a medical, that's a risk assessment to sign. So you're done, right? No, like... No, so what's the story there? So the minute if you've trained and now you're at the medical stage, paperwork's coming. So, so what? Actually, you know, they had a Brazilian boy there as well, and he, him, and I were doing the medical. So, like you said, you know, and this is what the, the conversation was within the playing group. A couple of players that I knew, and they said, well, "If you're doing that, you're obviously over the line." Yeah. Um. So that. That to me was, again, it's the uh, naivety of, of myself, which, you know, we sit in, the, in, in, in a hotel room waiting for my agent to come back to explain to me the deal has fallen through. Um, so, so obviously, so they, 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 they work on figures, they Sash. They work on figures, what he gets, what he gets from me. Um, and obviously, he... he Obviously, bats too high above his what his capabilities are, and they're not going to go for, for for obviously two signings. They're just happy to go do the one. 
And then he came back and said to me, okay, deal's not done. The deal's done. You're not going, uh, but don't go home now. I try and get you another uh, a trial. So I think I think he botched the I botched the negotiation. Oh, he botched it. He botched yeah. it. I mean, and if you, if, yeah, it's terrible. And, and so for, for me, for me, uh, no wonder why family members end up becoming player represent representatives, right? Uh, around the trust, you're not in the room, right? So you don't know what's said. That's terrible. So, so, but you've gone to 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 Belgium and to the Netherlands. These are top leagues, right? Do you ever consider playing in the first division in in Macedonia? You know, maybe the you know a tier or two below, and then being a, a professional there. Did, did that ever you ever have the opportunity? Or I think I think you know. Uh... I think it was the it was the, the obviously that Saint Thrudden thing really um, changed my mind and the whole football perspective and the trust factor because um, I didn't come home straight away. I went to play on obviously a one game off and another team called Ostend in the first division, Belgium. It was a one game off where. Lawrence Kidner was an old George Cross boy. Was playing yeah, so I, I know yeah. Lawrence well. He played. I ended up was going. Just... Okay, so he played there as well. He played there as well, and he was coming back from an injury, and then um, I happened to play this one game off, just to, and they had a few trialists. I mean, this was a strange thing. I think to myself, you can see the difference between clubs in, in, in Europe itself. You've got the bigger clubs that hold three- to four-week trial periods or two weeks, but this was just the one game off. Okay. But I was doing anything to sacrifice and, and be there. So if it was one game, it was one game. Uh, ended up playing this game as well and ended up being, I think it was a Czech Republic guy, it was an African boy and it was me that were in trial in this one game. It was a reserve game, as it would, because, you know, obviously that's the way it is. Ended up being a game was 4-4, doing well, scored two, the other boy scored two. And again, it was like State League 5 in Victoria, let's just say, yeah, where there's a discussion going on with the agent and the coach and the president after the game in terms of me, I guess, and they said straight out no. So we've travelled two, three hours to play this game to be told no. I, so, I think I did well, you know. Okay, but Lawrence is at this club as well. So Lawrence is at this club. Lawrence okay. is there. So you're you speaking know English to him. He, oh, so... he, he was playing and he was coming okay. back from an injury and he was playing okay. ball, looking after me. You know, that sort of, you know, expat, I guess. Yeah. Um. You know, asked him the question, what do you think? How do you think I did? He goes, you did very well. You know, can't, can't say no reason why. And in the end, it doesn't happen. And, yeah. and then it was right after that where I just said, enough's enough. Okay. Uh, I'm hitting now 26 and beyond. Um, I, I can't keep on doing this. And when you asked that question to go to Macedonia at the time, um, I just wanted to come home. Got it. Yeah. I just wanted to come home and, yeah. You know, it's very, it very hard to put your body and, and, and your mind, uh, obviously, as well, was being battered. You know, just head, head spin. You, you go on, you go on to coach uh, as well um, after your playing career. Um, which, which clubs did you coach at? Well, obviously, you missed a couple of things. Obviously, I played Pascal too. I could, yeah. I okay. Blaine. Um, like, you know, we're going to get Pascal into it because, you know, my, my wife's family is part of that club, I guess. Okay, yeah. Um, played a couple of seasons at Pascaval. Um, okay. This was the latter stages of my career, you know, under Luch Trani, you know. Um, but that was good. And then obviously being at the club, my kids were brought up around the premises, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then they start playing football there. Coached my oldest boy for three seasons in the junior program, NPL junior program. Um, and then coach my youngest one there for, for two seasons. So, so for five, six years, I coached at Pascaval in junior football. And then from there, I uh, obviously they they did well for themselves in terms of the development, uh, made Melbourne City Academy. Um, and so that sort of paved the way uh, for me to coach senior football. Um, but, you know, we forgot the period there where 2010, I coached Sultana Magic. Oh, um, yes. Okay. So, how did that come about? Like, it was you, you play, play, play coach. 
uh, more of a coach. Okay. So it was, it was right after that period of time at Pasco Vale. Uh, I retired oh, as a footballer. So Pasco oh, Vale retired. Been, okay, you went back to coach. Uh, you went back to and coach. I went to coach Altona. Uh, wanted to coach that 2010 season from the start. Applied for the job. Uh, obviously, they had a, a, a different avenue that chose Blasovsky. Um, he coached, I think, halfway through the season. And me being me, the way the way I am, I had the love, obviously, for the club, the passion that was sitting rock bottom. Um, I went and coached. Um, uh, some iffy results, I guess, but uh, we, you know, still, I was a young lad at the time, you know, to be coaching, but um, ended up getting relegated by one point. Um, and I think it, you know, really, you know, through the you know, uh, as you say, a knife through the dagger, I guess. Uh, ended up being released from Magic as a coach. Um, but in hindsight, I should never have taken that job on at mm. the start, uh, midway through the year. I think it was one of those things of life lessons. Um, you know, it's just you've inherited somebody else's squad. Yeah. And you try and make a problem squad. Um, you're thinking that you, you've got all this mindset that you can change things and do things. Um, I think with probably my inexperience in that sort of factor, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, won, yeah, we won some big games. You know, we beat Bentley 6 0, George Cross 6 0. You know, we beat Oakley, uh, you know, uh, last game of the year, they were sitting finals, beat them. So it's a very up and down season, and it's the most famous game that we played too. It was a 7 5 game against, you know, South Melbourne at Northcote. It was, you know, it's in folklore history, mm. but it should never have taken that job on, you know, at that period of time. That's the way mm. I look at it. Um, but yeah, so that was a, st- a short stint at Altona. And then uh, after my kids in that period of time, when I stopped coaching them, I, I coached down at um, Sydenham Park. Okay. Yeah, coached them from state three, uh, state three, all the way up to state one with them. Fantastic, fantastic! I, I remember, I remember that uh, being uh, at Western Suburbs and and playing against Sydney. So, um, talk to me now. And you've got two young boys going through the system, both both quality uh, quality boys after their father. Hopefully, they they uh, they they um, get the opportunity to 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 reach their full potential. But but tell me now, you're speaking to that, you know. I mean, it, this is a little bit ironic because you've got one boy at the, at this age, but you're speaking to that 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old trying to make that transition from playing against kids the same age and trying to translate to playing against men. What advice do you have for those people, um, boy or girl, trying to make that transition from youth football to, to senior football? Yeah, I mean... It's it's more the fact that speaking of my term of my my oldest son, um, it's it's more the fact that you need to listen to the coaches and what they ask you to do. I guess um, we all know these kids at that age tend to know everything. Mm. Um, you know, and even I was at fault of that too at that same age. Um, so you need a bit of guidance in terms of leadership and people around you. So you need to work off these people. I think if you take a bit from him, a bit from him, from coaches, you know, what you put in your bag, you you, you learn a lot, you know, quick smart. Um, because if you start to say no to people, you need whatever, I know this, I know that, you're not going to make it. You know, at the end of the day, you're not going to make it because it is a process. I think that process is for you to listen, listen as much as you can, absorb as you can, and keep working on your on your fundamentals. And how does the game, you know, evolve moving forward? The game was different from what it was so many years ago. Now it's a running game. Mm. Yeah. So how, how can you improve yourself at 18, 19? You're not playing junior football anymore. You're playing men's football. So how can you improve yourself going forward? Mm. That, that's the way I say, you know, if, if you're getting left behind, you know, half a yard here, half a yard there, then, you know, it's going to take a lot for you to catch up. Mm. fantastic words of wisdom 
Sash, thank you so much for your contribution to Australian football. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you banged away so many goals um, for the teams that you played for um, and you're well remembered. So uh, thank you for this conversation. And a former gold medalist too. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Get one of those. Absolutely. Well Thanks, done. Sash. Thanks, mate. Appreciate the phone call and uh, excellent talking to you, mate. Brilliant. Hey, guys. We've come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our wonderful guest. If you like this type of content and would like to see more, how about you hit the like and subscribe button and have a fantastic day.